These are Bordon's Isidro Chelsea's and they have two uh, choices for the soul. Let's take a look at them and see which ones might interest you. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I uh, live on, the Wajit people. Today I'm taking a look at Bourdon's rugged Chelsea. Bourdon's Isidro is clearly a fairly outdoorsy rugged boot. Uh, this is no R.M. Williams uh, comfort craftsman with its very sleek design. The last has a rounded, almost bulbous kind of toe shape. And they're really quite um, significantly tough looking when you got them on your feet. In this case, they're both in wax suede, which also gives it that quite rugged color. Now, obviously as a Chelsea boot, they have no laces and they stay on because of these elastic goring pieces. Um, in both of these versions, they have that lovely orange kind of bright lining leather on the inside, which is uh, an early Bordon trademark. In both these cases, they are stitch down construction, 270 degree stitch down construction, uh, where the uppers are flared out and then sewn onto the midsole in this case, before the wedge sole is uh, glued on. And then in this case, sewn through the midsole as well as the outsole. Uh, and then the heel block itself is glued and nailed on. So what I want to do is look at these two sole options and start to discuss them and provide some pros and cons in my opinion of what they're like. But before I do that, let's take a quick look at the brand. So Bordon Colombia was founded in 2019 by partners Andres Silvia and Natalia Herrera. They're really quite an up-and-coming brand and have started to make a mark amongst boot collectors uh, for their toughness and quite unique nature of some of their designs. Bordon originally made shoes in Europe and then imported them into Colombia. But in 2021, they started to move to making boots locally in, in Colombia. Their first batch were actually Blake stitched. However, they've since moved to stitch down construction, where, as I said earlier, the uppers are flared out and then stitched through to the sole construction. Now, the stitch down construction, I think people say are the most water resistant, even more than Goodyear welted, because they have all the stitching on the outside, and because of that flared um, outward shape of the uppers, the water tends to wick off. The Blake stitching is perhaps the least water resistant because a single stitch actually goes through the, the outsole into the boot. Now, the reason why they don't, or at least haven't so far, made Goodyear welted versions of their boots is that apparently Goodyear welt machines are not available in Colombia. Which is Bourdon's business model is to do periodic group MTO batches. So the way they do this is about twice or three times a year, they will release any new designs or they'll open up their website uh, for you to do pre-orders on MTOs. The MTOs are a little limited in, in options because you can choose the boots, but what you can do is you can choose uh, different sole options, different uppers, different stitching and so on. Other than that, what you do is when they do open up the, the MTO, you uh, or make an order and then unfortunately you have to uh, wait while they're, while they're made. So at the moment, some wait times have been described to me as like up to six months, which is it, which, it's just very long. Now for a $300, $400 boot, you might think, oh, what am I waiting for? Why don't I just go and buy Grant Stone or Parkhurst or Red Wing, something that's available off the shelf? Well, I think the unique nature of this makes it quite a worthwhile wait. The interesting thing is if you were buying a $600, $700 pair of whites or, or nicks, you don't seem to complain about the long wait because coming from the PNW uh, boot makers, you kind of expect long waits uh, and you kind of expect your boot to be made and so on. Well, they're no different. Uh, everything here is veg tan leather or a really good uppers leather. What they may be missing is the kind of sole arch construction that Pacific Northwest boots do have, uh, which build up the arch onto different lasts 
that are a little bit higher and give you extremely good arch support. I have to say though that I can't complain about the arch support on these boots. I'll leave a uh, link to the website below. It is important to note that the price includes free shipping anywhere in the world, which living out here in Australia, that's actually a terrific uh, advantage. Um, if you take a look at the website with the link below, they do show three models. They have the Isidro Chelsea boot, the Tucano, I would call it a jump boot, a, a, a combat boot, and then they have the Juanes, a plain toe sort of ankle boot. Specifically looking at the Isidro Chelsea, I think this is a really tough kind of work boot Chelsea. I would wear these when I'm working around in the garden uh, or maybe uh, working on my wife's uh, investment properties where I'm, I'm renovating her kitchens and bathrooms and so on. They're a little firmer than say an Australian work boot like a, like a, a red back or a blundstone but they're, they're really supremely protective and solid and, and, and great underfoot. They do come with various uppers. Uh, these are in wax suede, but you can also get them in the uh, different types of colors and uppers uh, that you can see on the website. The fitting of Chelsea's can be quite tricky because you sort of want quite a firm grip over your instep. At the same time, if they're work boots, you want reasonable room in your toes, but the ball of your feet also have to be quite uh, snug and the waist and the heel. Now, that does mean that if it fits you badly, you're gonna find Chelsea boots quite loose. I find the Bordon last really good like that. It's quite snug in the heel. It's reasonably snug in the waist. It's comfortable, but you know, fits over the ball of the foot and the toe box is quite roomy. So that means when I slip my foot into it, I'm held well so that there's limited heel slip. You're always gonna get heel slip with Chelsea's. But because it's held well, you're gonna have limited heel slip. And there's plenty of room for your toes to scrabble and gain hold, which I, I really like. In terms of fitting, I take these in a uh, size 41, uh, uh, 41, 41.5 European, which is an eight, eight and a half, uh, which is you know going from a, a half a size down to true size. There are three or four choices of soles as well. Uh, but in my opinion, the wedge sole and the commander sole are probably the best uh, for the types of use that you might want to put these through. But what are the pros and cons of each type of sole? So let's take the uh, wedge sole first. This is a Vibram Christie wedge sole. People sometimes call it a crepe rubber sole, which it's not. It's actually blown rubber. Uh, it's a rubber compound where uh, they mix the rubber compound and then they blow air through it so that there's tiny little air pockets inside, which is why it's actually a little bit softer. It's not crepe rubber, which tends to be raw rubber that you get in the bottom of, say, Clark's Desert Boots. The advantages are that it's reasonably soft um, and it's, it's quite grippy and the arch support is really good because it's flat and you don't have that little uh, gap between your heel and the ball of your foot, which sometimes might give you um, some arch pain as your arch sort of slips down into that crack. There's also a steel shank to also give it more rigidity, but really that, that arch being flat footed on, onto the ground and supportive inside of your arch just gives you a lot of grip and comfort. Uh, another pro is that it doesn't track dirt from outside to inside. So if this got sandy and muddy, uh, all you had to do is basically uh, wipe your feet <laughs> and knock it a couple of times and everything falls off. So that's one of the great advantages, particularly if you're working in the garden and you're coming back inside. I also think that looks unique. It really looks very sleek with no laces and then you, you put this chunky wedge sole on and it really looks quite uh, sleek and unique. The uh, Christy wavy zigzaggy pattern is actually surprisingly grippy even though it looks reasonably flat and like you know what what's the grip going to be from but it is quite grippy now if you look at the cons though the softness means that it wears faster than hard rubber so this may not last you as long as say the commando sole uh, wearing like for like the cream color some people hate it can get dirty but to my mind what the hell <laughs> What, what, you know, you're not, you're not wearing this to the office, so what, what does it matter if it gets a little bit dirty and, and um, scruffy? One of the biggest cons, in my opinion, though, 
is that with this sort of double leather midsole that Bourdon uses, and it being so thick, some bootmakers might actually sand uh, the Christie down so it's, it's not as thick. But being so thick and the combination, it is really difficult to break in at that flex point. Because uh, Chelsea boots particularly need you to flex at the ball of the foot. Because um, what happens is as you walk and you flex, that's when you avoid lifting your heel higher than the inside of the boot. And with this, it's actually quite difficult. Um, so it's marginally less comfortable than, than uh, the Commander sole, which I'll talk about in a minute. The flex point at the ball is really quite critical to how comfortable you feel. And this one is quite stiff. Also, once the, that wavy pattern wears off, it does tend to be quite slippery. Now to the uh, Commander Lug Sole version. This Commander Lug Sole is from Its Hide, a British company. Now, interesting thing, my research shows that Its Hide may have been the first company to invent Commander Soles. Now, usually, a lot of reviews, myself included um, early on, said that Vibram, Vitali Brahmani, who uh, founded the Vibram company, uh, we said that he invented the commando sole when five of his friends died uh, climbing a mountain uh, and they fell off. Well, further research <laughs> shows that they did not die from falling off the mountain. What happened is they went up the mountain in the, in the 1930s, um, basically normal shoes to climb up the mountain. Bad weather rolled through and they couldn't get off the mountain because they couldn't get enough grip on their, on their feet to climb down wet, slippery rocks. And what they did was they died of exposure. So what Vitali Brahmani did was he converted uh, tougher climbing boots, specific climbing boots from the normal kind of boots that people wore up mountains. And it wasn't until the 1940s, I think it was 1940 in fact, that its height invented the commando sole to uh, put under the, the service boots of the Royal Marine Commandos that had just been formed because it would give grip uh, as they, as they uh, landed on beaches and sand and that sort of thing. So that part of the commando sole story seems to have got lost. And I'm still researching this, but what I'm beginning to dig up is in fact that Its Hyde, the British manufacturer, first invented the commando sole, and then after the war, Vibram, added it to their tough climbing boots. Now, if you're comparing this to the Vibram version, I find this to be a slightly softer compound. So they can be pretty comfortable, but the lugs themselves, like all commander boots, can be quite bumpy underfoot because inside the boot, you've got a layer of veg tan leather and then you've got some cork. So you're, you're landing immediately on those lugs. So you, can, you tend to feel the lugs and they can be quite bumpy. Uh, this is obviously more durable than the, the softer blown rubber, so this should last you for a much longer time if you're wearing light for light wear. The pros are it's very grippy in rough ground, uh, over rocks, uh, over sand, over mud, uh, very grippy because of the way the lugs kind of bite into things. The lower profile also looks quite good and gives it a certain balance and if you uh, you know, if you don't like that sort of wedge sole look, the Chelsea on that lower profile heat, uh, sole gives it quite a nice look. The softer compound also makes it grippy. Um, more so, I think, that in, in my Vibra Commander sole boots, which, which sometimes when it's wet, I slip on wet pavement. I find this is a lot better for that kind of grip. It's also easier to break in because it is thinner and it does flex a lot better than, than this one, which, you know, sometimes uh, doesn't feel like it flexes at all and sometimes feels like you're actually walking on board. Now to the cons, guess what? You can pick up a hell of a lot of dirt. Like the where the wedge sole uh, just doesn't pick up dirt when you come indoors, this one does. And on pain of death, my wife has asked me to uh, examine the soles of my boots when I come in. And you can actually see anyway, bits of gravel already picked up uh, in, in the, in the uh, actual lugs between the lugs it's unavoidable and one of the joys of owning commander sole boots is uh, you have to kind of pick out all the rocks that compact in there 
Uh, so that's it. My thoughts on uh, the two sole options that you can get in the Bordon Isidro uh, Chelsea boot, which are my favorite two options. You can get two others. They're also available in leather and in half lug uh, soles where there's a leather uh, full slip uh, outsole. And then on top of that, they put a half lug of uh, rubber uh, lug sole. You know, but as a work boot, I prefer the wedge and the commando. Uh, they just give you that much better, I think, solidity when you're working and climbing up ladders and things. It also, both of them also look good. I'm not sure that I think a rugged Chelsea boot like that looks good with a, with a leather sole. Maybe the half lug sole is a, is a good combination. But it is horses for courses, right? It's what you wear them for, how you, uh, how you actually use them, what kind of look you like with your boots. So those two are my favorites. You might have a look, you go check out the website, have a look and, and tell me what you like. So talking about like, I hope you like this video. If you do, please click on the like button and don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Okay then, take care out there and I'll see you again soon.